Hello friends, this video on chemical reactions and equations part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 11. Now we will discuss the acid base reactions, another type of reactions, acid base reactions. And please note this also will uh, come in one of the five, the big, the, the basic property, the basic classification of the uh, the chemical reaction it will come in one of the five depending on the reaction I'm talking about. So general form is AC plus base is equal to salt plus water. So since it is uh, AC plus base is equal to salt plus water, so it is like you know reactants of a base and the acids they react and the product is salt and water, right? So the positive ion of hydrogen of the acid and the negative of this uh, hydroxyl ions. They lose the electrical charge and becomes covalent molecular with the water. So you want to understand this line, you can forget this line now. You will understand this more when you learn the covalent bond and thing. Just understand the acid base, what happened is you have this reactants or acids and base and the product is salt and water. And generally it is a double displacement reaction. Generally in case it's a double displacement uh, reaction. And uh, so acid base reaction actually is nothing but a neutralization reaction because what you're doing is you have an acid, you have a base, and finally you're getting the solid as neutral, right? So it's also called a neutralization reaction. Both are same. You tell the acid base reaction, your neutralization reaction, both are same actually. For example, I'll take one example. You have hydrochloric acid is acid, plus you take a base and AOH. You know that base has OH. And if you don't know, next chapter we are going to, I mean, next chapter will go for is acid and base. So you have acid and base. You react, you get NaCl, there's a salt plus water. This is a typical acid base reaction. And if you see here, the chlorine is pairing up with Na to get NaCl, and H is pairing with OH to get water, right? H2O. Water is H2O. This is a typical double displacement reaction where you have acid and base, they combine to form a salt, and also call a neutralization reaction. Now I will talk about exothermic and endothermic reaction. So it all depends on the heat. So if it gives out heat, if it gives out heat, it's exothermic. If it takes heat, it's an endothermic reaction, right? So if the heat is given out, it is exothermic. And if the heat is absorbed, right, and it is absorbed, it is an endothermic. So for example, so we have this magnesium and we have oxygen, you heat it, right? You heat it you get magnesium oxide. So in this case, the heat was required, right? So it is a endothermic reaction. But if you see a reaction, combustion reaction, for example, you have any substance or you have this lime water, you have COO, you add with water or carbon dioxide, I think, right? So you get CaCO3 plus heat, right? So in this case, if you see, this guy is giving out heat, so it's an exothermic reaction. So, so you can see that this is a different classification altogether. So these, but these also fall in one of these five. So it may happen that you get a, a combustion reaction as a exothermic. You also may get a synthesis reaction as exothermic. You may get a, a this kind of re decomposition reaction as as, as exothermic. You may also get a replacement or double displacement reaction also as a exothermic reaction. Similarly, the case with endothermic. So this is this classification is not based on the on the product numbers and the, the replacement it makes. This is solely based on the heat. If it emits heat, it is exothermic. If it requires heat, it is endothermic. Right? But end of the day, typically it will be part of one of these reactions. And it depends on the equation I'm talking about, right? You can't say that all the exothermic reactions are decomposition reactions or synthesis reaction or double different reaction. It can be any of these depending on the equation I'm looking for. But this is just a different classification. If it takes heat, exothermic. Sorry, if it takes heat, it's endothermic. If it emits heat, it's an exothermic reaction. Now the question is, why is respiration considered as exothermic reaction? So in the exothermic reaction, if you see, we have the heat is given out. And we see that in, in respiration, what happened is we have this food 
oxygen is taken with this we get energy and we get heat right this is the typical example of the or typical equation for this uh, respiration in this case we see the heat is coming out since the heat is coming out this guy is a exothermic reaction hope you understand this because of respirations you have this food in presence of oxygen the body using some catalyst and enzymes right so this guy produces energy and heat so heat is it comes out of this reaction so it's a exothermic reaction now we'll understand redox reaction nothing but oxidation and reduction reaction it's a very critical reaction so reaction involves loss or gain of hydrogen is called redox reaction so if you are gaining oxygen gain of oxygen or loss of hydrogen that is oxidation you are losing oxygen or gaining hydrogen that is reduction right so you gain oxygen so if you are gaining oxygen or losing hydrogen is oxidation so oxidation means gain oxygen reduction means lose oxygen correct so so for example if you have this copper you have oxygen you heat this copper right in terms of oxygen it becomes coo so in this case if you see the copper is gaining oxidation oxygen so you can say that copper is oxidized again this copper you get you again heat in the presence of hydrogen now so if now again see the copper is losing electron losing oxygen so in this case you see the copper is reduced and hydrogen is gaining oxygen now right hydrogen was h2 it becomes h2 so you can say that hydrogen is oxidized correct so anything that gains electron gains oxygen is oxidized in this case copper is less here hydrogen was gaining oxygen hydrogen oxidized anything that loses oxygen is called the reduction force in this case the copper lost lost oxygen same thing for hydrogen if something lose hydrogen that is oxidized something gains hydrogen that is we'll study all this reaction in the later chapter more uh, in deep corrosion is an example of a redox reaction in daily life where this uh, things we you see is it gets corroded right so it was a good looking um, object and this uh, this thing became rusted so what happens in corrosion is uh, and the question is why do we apply paints in our article because we don't want this iron to come in touch with oxygen so what happens is you have this iron it comes in oxygen this gives a reaction it's called fe2o3 and that is nothing but rust which you see here do you avoid this oxygen we paint this so if you avoid this oxygen if you paint this the iron won't come into contact with oxygen and this fe2o3 won't be created and then the resting will be provided. and the, why this happening this is the redox reaction why because the iron is gaining oxygen so iron is oxidize here correct so we'll study more about in deep about oxidation reaction in class 11 just in this chapter the concept was to make you understand the five basic thing reactions we have right and other reactions which you generally use for example an oxidation reaction each of these reactions one rancification reaction is also one uh, example of redox reaction in real life so if you see you know, the food which we have which you keep in uh, some time in dry place it got gets a bad smell why bad smell because this guy has fat and oil right this thing get oxidized and they become rancid and their taste is very bad this is one example of redox reaction in real life right and that's why what we do is we keep this food in air tight container right and also if you see the chips which you get the chips uncle chips and you know, uh, lays and all the other kind of chips you get they are packed in this wrapper and they are all air tight and this inside that they put some nitrogen so that they don't have they don't they don't come in contact with oxygen and these prevent these things to get oxidized because if it's oxidized it gets spoiled but if you see the pickle also we have in homes right that is dipped in oil so this pickles which we have is in dipped in oil why because in oil 
If it is an oil, it won't get contact with oxygen. If you don't need to contact with oxygen, it won't get rancified and it won't get spoiled. Right? So that's one way to prevent these things from getting rancified. So, so what we have learned, we have learned uh, the chemical equation definition that it presents reactant product and the physical state symbolically. And the chemical equation has to be balanced always, right? The law of conservation of mass. So in combination reaction, we have two or more substances to form a single combustion. In decomposition reaction, we have one compound bringing in two or more substances. So in, in displacement reaction, we have one element dis displaced another one. In double displacement, we have both the elements swap, right? And the reaction where heat is given out is called uh, exothermic. The reaction where requires heat is called endothermic. Right, this we have learned. We have learned the oxidation is nothing but the process of gaining of oxygen or losing hydrogen, and reduction is the reverse process of losing oxygen or gaining of hydrogen. That's what we have. Thank you. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.